Right now, inflation is the burning problem that's troubling the whole world. Gas and groceries both have seen significant price increases. People are finding it difficult to deal with the rising cost and meeting up their daily needs. The Fed has stated that this inflation is only temporary and is not a cause for concern. On the other side, Warren Buffett has been heard discussing how Berkshire Hathaway's businesses are experiencing significant inflation. Michael Burry is also producing a brand new big short on bonds. Therefore, it's something to keep an eye on. But how exactly does it impact us as investors and how should we invest during a time of high inflation? Well, in this video, we're going to dive into some past annual letters from the world's best investor, Warren Buffett, to see and learn how we should approach investing during inflationary periods. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos we upload. Having said that, let's start. Currently, the United Kingdom's inflation rate increased to a 41-year high of 11.1% in October, exceeding forecasts as consumer and company budgets were further squeezed by rising food, transportation, and energy costs. Argentina has an inflation rate of up to 85%, while the US and Canada have rates of 7.7 and 6.9% respectively. The U.S. year-over-year -year inflation rate has decreased from 7.75% from 8.2% in September, but it is still at a 42-year and 75-year high. Naturally, with such a record high inflation rate, it's not a good time for investors because the goal as investors is to invest a particular sum of money with the hope of recovering more of it later. But with such a price hike, the return is not possible. In layman's terms, we are foregoing the ability to purchase 100 meatballs today in the hopes of acquiring 150 in the future. When you consider it that way, you are now considering your actual return. And while you might earn, say, 20% on an investment over a few years, there's a chance that your real return would be nil if inflation is out of control. Due to inflation, your return and purchasing power hasn't increased. This is a talking point of Warren Buffett from 1979. A few years ago, a corporation could have guaranteed itself a highly successful real investment return if its per share net worth compounded at 20% per year, he remarked. Inflation rates and individual tax rates will ultimately determine whether our internal operating performance provides effective investment results, i.e., a decent gain in buying power from money invested for you as shareholders. As a result, such an outcome now seems less certain. He further noted, just as the initial 3% savings bond, a 5% passbook savings account, or an 8% U.S. Treasury note have, in turn, been changed by inflation into financial products that chew up rather than boost purchasing power throughout their investment lives. Under inflationary circumstances, a company earning 20% on its capital could give its owners a negative real return, not significantly more severe than current conditions. The inflation rate at the time, which was in 1979, was 11%, so it's absurd that when considering investments from the perspective of purchasing power, the 3% savings bond, high-income bank accounts, and even, you know, an 8% guaranteed government bond back then were still causing investors to lose purchasing power. According to Buffett, the inflation rate plus the proportion of capital that the owner must pay to transfer into his pocket the yearly earnings achieved by the business, i.e. ordinary income tax on dividends and capital gains tax on retained earnings, can be thought of as an investor's misery index. In 1980, Warren Buffett used the analogy of a typical tax-paying investor climbing a downhill escalator whose paces have increased to the point where his upward progress is zero. Even though the investor consumes nothing at all, real capital shrinks when this is more than the business's rate of return on equity. So what are we to do? This is Warren Buffett's explanation of the kinds of companies that typically perform well, even during times of excessive inflation. According to him, such a business must possess two qualities. The first is the ability to raise prices rather readily, even when product demand is flat and capacity is not being used to its full potential, without worrying about suffering a sizable loss in either market share or unit volume. The second feature is the flexibility to accept significant dollar volume increases in the company, which frequently result in actual growth with just modest additional capital investment. It makes sense, doesn't it? Why not pass those additional costs on to the client when the company is experiencing greater costs that are hurting its margins? This is absurd. No business could pull that off. People would simply go elsewhere and purchase the less expensive item. However, if the business has a moat, 
there is a way. The term moat describes a company's capacity to hold on to the competitive advantages that enables it to defend rivalry and sustain profitability going forward. Assume you run a small production firm and have invested in training all 50 of your staff members to utilize a particular software. That required both time and money. Now the software company announces that monthly subscription fees have increased by $10. Then you can choose a less expensive option. You might discover a less expensive option. However, it lacks several of the functionalities that the team's current system has. Additionally, training each employee on the new program will cost $200 not to mention the downtime your business will experience while training is completed and everyone is switched over. Then you realize that you are already stressed because of the clients. They are working to complete their productions. Additionally, switching is ultimately not worthwhile. What do you do then? You continue to use the same software and simply agree to pay more. Yet another instance from the actual world Apple's brand moat and ecosystem are so strong that it's entirely reasonable for them to demand a little bit more money from each consumer each year. The average selling price of an iPhone in 2012 was a little over $600, ended 2018 at a little under $800. It is now $1,500. And that doesn't even take into account the several add-on memberships that Apple essentially foisted upon you. Apple Music, iCloud, and Apple Care are just a few examples. There is no way out, and it is the key idea. Instead, look to organizations with exceptionally strong moats that can raise prices without repercussions during inflationary periods. You want businesses that are both expanding and reasonably scalable. You want your company to be able to handle significant dollar volume growth in sales with only modest new capital expenditures. A shipbuilding company, for instance, might have difficulty with this. Building a large ship is expensive and you won't make significant profits doing it. The capacity to scale up their business such that the reduced margins don't influence the financials is the second trait that helps your organization grow, even during periods of inflation. So invest in or create a business system that generates recurring income but needs little startup capital, such as networking or internet marketing. If given the option to start over again, I would choose network marketing, as Bill Gates famously said. According to Warren Buffett, the greatest businesses to buy during an inflationary period are ones you can purchase once and stop making capital investments afterward. It was a wise investment. Whether or not we are experiencing inflation, you should choose the index fund as opposed to trying to pick specific stocks. Investors should follow what Warren Buffett advised to them. When trillions of assets are managed by Wall Streeters, charging hefty fees, the managers typically gain outsized profits, not the clients. Large and small investors alike ought to continue with inexpensive index funds. It's not just a piece of advice. According to Mr. Buffett, he has also directed his trustees to invest 90% of his inheritance for the benefit of his wife in an S&P 500 index fund following his demise. Buffett does, however, have one additional piece of advice for individuals looking for the best course of action during an inflationary period since sometimes there is simply no escape. Even stock market investing might be challenging in these times. No matter what happens to the value of the currency, you are quite likely to keep your purchasing power if you own stock in a successful company. If your company has a moat and can raise prices without experiencing any negative effects, it will genuinely succeed while everyone else fails. But suppose you don't have investments in such companies. How should you invest appropriately in light of the relatively high levels of inflation? What can you do? The best investment against inflation, in Buffett's opinion, is to increase your earning potential and talent. Be incredibly proficient in something. Very few people can fully utilize their talents, and if you can, they cannot tax you while you're doing it. They are unable to rob you of it. The best defense against a currency that can depreciate quickly is to become more helpful in your activities and profession. Yes, improve your worth. If you can keep your purchasing power, you'll still be in a wonderful position to invest and probably be able to acquire some bargain stocks once inflation has subsided. You can still think about purchasing stocks if you are still interested in investing in or purchasing something other than index funds. Purchase companies that are resilient to economic downturns. Businesses that develop or sell consumable products include Walmart, Target, Apple, Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, Kroger, AT&T, and others. With all these statements made, 
The information in this video is only meant to be educational or entertaining and is not intended to be financial advice. We don't dispense any financial advice. Always do your research before making any financial decision. That's all for today's video, guys. So what's your plan for investment during this time of inflation? Tell us your views in the comment section. See you in the next video. Until then, cheers.